made before. No, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Urez, and the chairperson of this uh, press today. I welcome all of you, members of the Fourth Estate. I also would like to welcome all ambassadors who have come to hear the message that I intend to deliver to the nation today. Uh, I thank you very much for your presence, your excellencies. Uh, I also would like to thank some of the political players in this country who are also present at this press conference. I, I'm seeing uh, Honorable Morgan Comich seated at the corner there. Uh, he is with us at this press conference in solidarity with the message that we are going to deliver today. I also see another major political player seated uh, at the corner, Chris Makati, who has also joined us to, today. I welcome all of you, uh, gentlemen, to this press conference. Uh, we are going to distribute our statement to all His Excellencies who are here and also to the member of the Fourth Estate to get their copies so that there will be no distortion of the message that is going to be delivered here today. For nearly two years, since the 14th of June 2022 to January 30, 2024, I was a subject of repression and kept in peace and being denied bail. I took the challenge in the strike, taking it, it as we go. When you are under attack, I learned not to panic but repel everything thrown at you and use it to sustain oneself against all adversities. This experience that I went through during almost two years in prison hardened me, ladies and gentlemen. There is nothing that will be thrown at me that will either shake or frighten me. In reflection, after such a long period of isolation from your colleagues, associates, and family, when I came out, I issued the following Thanksgiving statement. I opened court, court marks. For nearly two years, I suffered in my oppressor's dungeon. You prayed for me to be released from the jaws of my tormentors. You clamored loudly for my release as you knew that I was innocent. You stood with my family. I am crying as I type this statement. Your love strengthened me throughout. I deeply understand the pain and agony we shared together during the period of my unmitigated oppression. But let me reassure all of you that I am prepared to pay any price for the love of my country. That I am prepared to pay any price for the love of Zimbabwe. That I am prepared to pay any price in defense of democracy, freedom, and the happiness of our people. To all Zimbabweans in the country and in diaspora, I thank you. Let me thank all progressive organizations in politics, in the media, civic society, student bodies, professionals, members of parliament, both domestically and internationally, for ceaselessly condemning the tyrannical persecutions perpetrated upon me by my enemies. Let me also thank members of the diplomatic corps from world democracies in Africa whose solidarity was priceless. Let me also thank members of the let me also thank world governments who remained alert to what was transpiring on my persecution. 
to the free job scholars or that movement, you were the missing link in the equation. To my lawyers, words alone are insufficient to express my gratitude. To my scalp and family, thank you very much, very much for your love. With all my love, may the Almighty God bless all of you. If I omitted or overlooked to thank others who devoted, who, devo who devoted their time, energy, and emotions for my freedom, my sincere apologies. I sincerely thank you. The new democratic culture, which we will ever strive to achieve, even if it means with our own blood, does not absolve me from criticism on omissions which I could have done. This is the cornerstone of a democratic struggle we have been engaging in and which we desire to build in Spain. It is said that for the past two years when I was in prison, things have changed for the West. I still found people in abject poverty struggling for a meal a day, shrinking democratic space in entrenched dictatorship, fear and hopelessness of the direction the country is going. Elections came and went when I was in prison. Amid an extreme toxic political environment and the clamor for economic and electoral reforms. Before going any further, any form of electoral process in our country under the same usual conditions and without the necessary reforms to deliver the will of the people there has been a challenge confronting us as Zimbabwe since the emergence of the mass democratic struggle in our country. This is the center of the democratic struggle for any future political trajectory in Zimbabwe. The call for reform shall be the forte of our struggle and shall position and give the people of Zimbabwe a golden chance to choose leaders of their own choice. The question to ask is whether the mass democratic struggle is going to achieve a different result from our experience, experiences of the past. What is the strategy? I'll come to this question at a later stage. What is currently happening in the opposition is not uncommon. It is the common political strategy that has been happening and implemented by despots throughout the world down the centuries. Mobut Seseko used the same strategy of distributing patronage and buying of individual in opposition ranks to destroy and disorganize it by exploiting, exploiting the discovered weaknesses in the opposition superstructure. During the mass democratic revolt against imperialism and colonialism in our country, the reduction king Ian Douglas Smith implemented the strategy with perfection to the extent of delivering an internal settlement. Series of apartheid leaders applied the same strategy and tactics and ended up establishing homelands which purportedly gave a facade of independence to black self-governed enclaves. Dear Zimbabweans and worldwide friends, Zimbabwe is at the crossroads. Coming back to the question, whether the mass democratic struggle in our nation is going to achieve a different result from our experiences of the past. Yes, it will. Yes, it will be. How? Our, our seemingly unsurmountable struggle for freedom and emancipation needs everyone on board, whether black, white, or yellow. It is our challenge together. Our struggle should not be restrict, restricted by narrowness, lack of initiative and hesitation. The question on what to do next is answered by the authors and originators of the mass democratic struggle in Zimbabwe. Who are the people who in February 1999 spoke through the People's Working Convention where, where all constituent bodies were represented? The Working People's Convention was an affirmation to Martin Luther King Jr.'s proclamation that there comes a time when people get tired of being trembled over 
by the iron feet of oppression. There comes a time when people get tired of being flung across the apse of humiliation, where they experience the bleakness of naked death. The weaknesses of our 1999 approach was that the meeting of the constituent bodies was heavy at the top, with only ZCQ having grassroots structures. It was the meeting of constituent bodies at the national level, with less participation from the shop floor and village level, which eventually led to the clash of equals. Zimbabwe needs a way forward to answer the national question of where to from here. The way forward on what should be done from here will come from the people through a mass national, a mass nationwide democratic consultative process. The national consultative process will convene the national the nationwide democratic consultative conventions. The consultative process will involve all important constituent bodies. That is the general masses of our people. Labor, students, traditional leaders, churches, civic society, our business persons, professionals, resident associations, informal traders, women clubs, farmers, peasants, youth organizations, progressive political organizations, war veterans, war collaborators, artists, corporate business sector, and people living with disabilities. It will start from the village to the ward, district and provincial level. This process will be conducted by the representatives of different constituents, constituent bodies mentioned above at every level. The process will eventually lead to the convening of the National People's Democratic Convention. The input and ideas that will come from the people will be collected and coalesced by the National Democratic Task Force, made up of seconded persons from different constituent bodies who will be conveners of the National Democratic People's Convention. Each one in this process shall elect a delegate to attend the National People's Democratic Convention, which will debate the views collected and coalesced during the Democratic Consultative Conventions, yet held at shop floor and grassroots level throughout the country. This will be our guide to the future. Critics are pointing out that some constituent bodies have been ejected by Zambia. Like what they have done to the Triple C. Let me give you as an example. What is such as the ZCTU or any other constituent, constituent body do not mean persons at leadership level. ZCTU is the worker who is at the shop floor level. It is not its leadership. There is no word, district or, or province without a student, a worker or a church elder. These are the ones that will constitute the democratic consultative convention. Therefore, there will be no one left without being consulted from Malipati to Matuswatona, from Kotwa to Manama, from Spepa to Mzarabad. We are embodied by the declaration of Nelson Mandela that action without vision is only passing time. Vision without action is merely daydreaming. But vision with action can change the world. We are not here to pronounce the Im emergence of a political organization, but a broad-based mass democratic movement for everyone in advancement of the mass democratic struggle in the fashion of the United Democratic Front of the 1980s in apartheid South Africa. This is motivated in remembrance of the great ideals held by many Zimbabweans who perished during the period of the liberation struggle, who could have wanted and those who died since the cessation of the goals and aspirations of the mass democratic struggle in Zimbabwe in February 1998, 1999. Dala Costa, get this message for all leaders. Do not promise what you cannot deliver. Do not misrepresent. Do not hide behind spin doctor divisions. Do not suppress obligations. Do not evade accountability. 
Do not accept the survival of the fittest precious. We promise that we will stand by our work and deliver in terms of our part. We are not men and women of empty place. We are decisive in our declarations. The mass democratic struggle is people driven and owned. Every struggle went throughout the world down the centuries. It succeeded when people own it. The masses must own the next decisive stage of our struggle. Whether I will be there with you or not, as my enemies have not shelved their plans to assassinate me for the sins best known to themselves, this process must proceed uninhibited to finality. With or without resources, the people shall carry out this most important task in the decisive phase of our history, and our people struggle against the tyrant for freedom, for their freedom, dignity, and prosperity. To all those who have retained their democratic right, to cling to the triple C carcass, I wish them all the best in their project. We pray to the God of David to give us the strength not to be shaken by the antics of our enemies and to bless, and to bless the fruits of our labor and efforts. I thank you, all of you. Thank you.